Films are made up of sequences. Sequences are made of scenes. And scenes are made up of shots. In the previous episode of this series, we went over how to frame your subjects to isolate individuals or create relationships. But as shot size and framing are decided, you'll need to consider camera height, specifically the angle of the camera. This is episode three of the shot list. Camera angles. If shot size and framing are used to isolate what we are looking at, camera angles are all about how we are meant to perceive them that adds yet another layer of meaning to every camera shot. We'll be looking at nine different types of camera angles. As we cover each camera angle and technique, we'll be filling out a shot list using Studio Binder that you can download and reference. Now, let's begin with our first camera angle, the low angle. Any shot that finds itself below a subject's eye line, looking up at them, is a low angle shot. Low angle shots are typically used to make a subject look more powerful, perfect for heroes and villains alike. The degree can be subtle or extreme. Low angles are not confined to human subjects like in 2001, but the effect is the same. Let's look at the scene. Man, that lousy Mufasa. Man, I hate lions. Pushing and hairy, and man, are they ugly! <laughs> oh, surely we lions are not all that bad. Oh, oh, scars, just you. <laughs> Consider this low-angle shot of Scar. Everything about this shot spells villainy: the color, the smoke, the darkness, the expression. But it is the low angle that brings it all together. For more on the low angle shot, check the description for our video where we break down how to use low angle in more detail. Up next, a complementary angle often paired with the low angle, the high angle shot. While low angle shots can pump a character up, high angle shots can beat them down. You will rise from the ashes! High and low angle shots are often paired in the same scene to heighten the imbalance of power between subjects. High angles are typically used to diminish a character, making them appear weak or vulnerable. An extreme variation of the high angle is the aerial shot, typically used to establish environments, cities, landscapes, or to present characters moving through a larger world. Northeast. What, did you stop for drive through For a rather extreme example of a high-angle shot, we look to the Avengers. A powerful hero needs a powerful villain. And what better way to challenge our muscle-bound protagonists than a threat that dwarfs them? In the description, you'll find a link to our high-angle video essay where we break down how to use this towering shot to convey narrative or character details and elicit a viewer's emotional response. When high angles approach 90 degrees above the subject, they become the overhead shot. An overhead shot, also known as a bird's eye view or a god's eye view, finds the camera directly above the subject, shooting straight down. Overhead shots are great for showcasing complex movements and they could suggest a connection to the divine or to capture the horrific details of a crime scene. Consider this moment from The Master. Freddy lays above his fellow sailors, most likely drunk and unconscious, but the shot is presented without context. All we see is a character who is disconnected in more ways than one. A 
And now, an angle that puts us off balance. The Dutch angle. The Dutch angle shot skews the horizontal axis of the frame for an off-kilter image that produces a variety of effects. A Dutch angle can create a sense of unease, mania. Back, Jim, back. If you don't buy things, toilet paper, new cars, computerized blenders, electrically operated sexual devices, serial systems with brain... Terror or bewilderment. You're worried about me. Why? A Dutch angle can also be used to magnify tension. In Do the Right Thing, director Spike Lee uses Dutch angles to intensify the vitriol between embittered characters. Get that jungle here. music off! We ain't in Africa! We ain't gonna be my jungle music! We ain't gonna be my Africa! As the racial tensions rise to a boiling point, so does the angle of the tilt. But there are nuances to properly set up a Dutch angle for maximum impact. Check the description to our video essay where we break down Brian De Palma's Dutch angle from this scene in Mission Impossible. You want to shake hands with the devil? That's fine with me. I just want to make sure that you do it in hell. Moving on. The eye level shot. Shooting an eye level is perhaps the most commonly used camera height. For the audience, it is the most natural height to regard a character. An eye level shot doesn't impose judgment on a character in the way a high or low angle shot does. But that doesn't mean it can't be engaging or dynamic. An IPO is an initial public offering. It's the first time a stock is offered for sale to the general population. In The Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort delivers this monologue straight into the camera at eye level. I, look, I, I know you're not following what I'm saying anyway, right? That's, that's okay, that doesn't matter. The real question is this, was all this legal? Absolutely f***ing not. The eye level shot, along with breaking the fourth wall, creates an instant connection to Jordan and his scheme. What? Oh! For more on the fourth wall, check the description for a video essay on how it can be used to create an instant rapport with your characters. Now, if we drop just a little below the eyes, we land at our next camera height, the shoulder level shot. If eye level is the most common and neutral shot height, then shoulder level is the runner-up. The lower position gives the illusion of a slightly low angle shot without its heavier connotations. Shoulder level shots are often used during conversations and frequently become an over-the-shoulder shot, or OTS. They can also emphasize a height difference, which translates visually to a power difference. Whoa! Damn! In a romantic situation, the barely upturned eye line can enhance an affectionate glance. In our OTS video, we break down this scene from Westworld. In the beginning, I imagined things would be perfectly balanced. To illustrate how camera placement can connect or disconnect your characters. On to our next camera angle. The hip level shot. The hip level shot can be found in every genre, but it makes its home in the Western, often in conjunction with a cowboy shot, which we covered in episode one, Shot Size. The principal reason for this is because gun holsters rest at hip height. Let's look at Sergio Leone's The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. Leone jumps between various hip level holster shots and eye level extreme close-ups to create an iconic sequence that is as exciting as it is tense. Just below the hips is our next camera height, the knee level shot. 
A knee level shot, of course, sees the camera placed at a subject's knee height. Knee high shots often find themselves doubling as low angles. But this one is a madman. A knee level shot can be a great way to track through an environment following a character. and can be a good way to showcase character details that might be missed in a wider shot. <laughs> like in this moment from Forrest Gump. <laughs> this perfectly chosen knee level shot gives us a front row seat to his personal triumph. Run Forrest, run. Now, our final category, the ground level shot. A ground level shot finds the camera placed all the way down on the ground, or sometimes even slightly below ground. Ground level shots often double as low angles if there is any degree of upward tilt. Shooting from ground level can be a stylish way to track a character's movement through a scene or to capture details within the setting. The Shining features one of the most iconic ground level shots of all time. The shot is full of dynamic movement as we track behind Danny's tricycle. The iconic carpet pattern and engrossing sound design keep us intrigued by this lengthy shot. It's haunting, even before we get to room 237. So when you sit down to create your shot list, consider how the camera angle or height affects the messaging. Be creative with your choices, don't just settle for what's expected. And don't worry about remembering all of these camera angles. If you're using our shot listing software, all of these options are built in. Mix and match, try different combinations of shot sizes, framing and angles. Get creative. You can find a link to Studio Binder in the description. It's free to get started. You'll also find a link to this full shot list and storyboard. Use it as inspiration for your next shoot. In the next episode of The Shot List, we'll turn attention to camera focus or depth of field and how they can be used to draw the audience in. That's it for now. It's time to take your shots to new heights.